Kerrigan. Kerrigan found motivation to create the Freedom Fighters of D.C. hours after George Floyd's death. Apparently it touched you because he's from your hometown of Houston, Kerrigan. Yeah, um, as said um, before we started filming, I grew up in Third Ward. Um, a lot of people that I know went to his high school, was his um, football coach. My cousin was his football coach at the time when he went to Yates. So it kind of, um, if I could be colloquial in terms, it hit different um, when it goes back to your home and your family friend. Yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine, well, I'm from Houston too, and I graduated from the same high school as George Floyd. So it definitely hit me um, in terms of the proximity uh, of it all. And just knowing what where Yates is centered in Houston and how uh, the CUNY homes, which is the projects that George Floyd grew up in, uh, is a huge part of Third Ward, the area in which he grew up, and how um, it's very difficult to get out of those circumstances. And I think it hit me different because I'm one of those people who got out of those circumstances and to see that there was a brother who made it out of the circumstance and decided he was gonna move to a totally different uh, state to even, you know, to better himself further and to get out of whatever troubles that, he, that he'd that he been in in the past and kind of start anew, it just really set off something in me. But apparently it didn't set off quite as strong a fire as it did in you to create a whole organization. What do the Freedom Fighters do? Um, so uh, the whole background story to this was one, one of the co-founders sent out a tweet and was just like, hey, like, if you want to go to a protest in D.C., you know, just hit me up. So we got all in this group. Me, it's maybe about like 20 of us. Um, the seven co-founders are facilitating the conversation. And we all thought that we were just going to be accountable for one another and just be walking buddies at protests that anybody else is um, doing. Just didn't want to go alone. But it snowballed into a thing where everybody felt like they walked in their purpose. Um, we had people just like, okay, well, I can provide legal aids. I can provide legal observers. I can do a bail fund. Let's like rate, let's crowdfund money. So if anybody um, does go to jail, they can have a stipend to get home uh, when they get out. So it was just an overwhelming response from there. Um, overnight, we had received thousands of dollars and thousands of followers and just people um, dedicated to the cause. So um, it was a snowball effect from there. Um, maybe in about four days, we planned our first action, which was a sit-in at the Capitol, and a thousand people came. Um, and this all came from just one tweet saying like, hey, do y'all want to go to a protest? So it's definitely just an overwhelming feeling of just support from the community and support from like-minded individuals that want to fight the same cause. It's interesting you say how quickly people rallied around the cause and the organization and the, the, the call to action, because I don't think that things, I think that this generation expects things to happen rather rapidly. And I don't know if that's the result of social media and the attention span that people now have, which is about roughly about 30 to 60 seconds. Um, but what do you, why do you think people rallied around you so quickly? Um, I'm truly not sure. Like maybe it was because that we were just regular folks just trying to do something not different, but just trying to make an impactful um action towards the movement i'm really not sure what may gain what we did that gained everybody's trust so fast because i know that i'm a type of person like hold on y'all just came on the scene y'all just created this twitter account two days ago i don't have many followers like why would i give you my money my donations and my time but maybe it was just seeing that like we're just regular folks that had time due to COVID 19 to put a little extra time into the movement and what we believe in and um, as stated before, we all stepped in our purpose and just tried to walk from there after we got that um, support. It's interesting um, that you say we're just regular people that came together and maybe that's why people supported us because I'm sure all three of you know Dave Chappelle came out with a, a brief uh, comedy that was really not a comedy, <laughs> comedy, um, I guess, Netflix special today. And in it, he says, you know, basically nobody wants to hear from a comedian after, you know, a, a man died uh, after um, 
the streets are talking is what he said. You know, these are the streets talking and they're mad and I don't need to be getting involved with that. I'm gonna let the streets handle it. And I think that it says something when the streets are handling the situations of the world. It, to use your collo colloquialism, it hits different, mm -hmm. definitely.